In modern air warfare, the skies are an incredibly dangerous place. Not only are there air threats to contend with, but the ground defenses are pretty nasty too. Air defense commanders hide their weapon systems and set up ambushes. They also organize themselves in a larger network so they can coordinate across a wide area. But when I see air defenses in DCS, they oftentimes look like this. This SAM system is all by itself, out in the open and constantly broadcasting its position to the world. When it's like this, it's easy prey and it's more like a ranged target than an active opponent. So what can DCS mission designers do to make it more realistic and challenging? We'll answer that question in this video. If you only follow one of the tips in this video, then it should be this one. Use the Skynet script. This is a custom made Lua script system made by a player that goes by Walder, and what it does is pretty amazing. It turns the default behavior of SAM systems in DCS into something intelligent. Instead of constantly emitting with their radars and giving away their position to everyone that wants to kill them, they'll stay dormant until an enemy is in range. This system follows the principles of a real-life IADS, which is an integrated air defense system. That's just a wordy way of saying all the air defense units are working together as part of a big team. With Skynet, you'll separate out your various radars in the network into those used for controlling the individual launch units and those used as wide area early warning sensors. The radars controlling the launchers will stay inactive until they receive an alert from the early warning radar assigned to them. So instead of having a display filled with radars, it'll look like this until you enter a SAM's weapon range. Then the site will wake up, lock on, and fire at you. If you go out of range, it'll go back to sleep until it gets another warning that an enemy has entered its space. Skynet is even smart enough to account for the destruction of early warning radars. Once a SAM site loses its early warning radar, it can no longer benefit from that radar. There are a ton of options you can add into your IADs through Skynet, like what an individual site does once it's all alone, or how close an intruder needs to be before a battery goes live. You can even add in command centers and power stations to add some depth to the IADs. One of the great benefits of Skynet is that unlike many other player-made add-ons for DCS, this one does not need to be installed by people playing the mission. Only the mission designer needs to do any setup. Anyone playing a mission with the Skynet IADs, whether it's in single player or online, doesn't need to do anything extra. I'll leave a link in the description to Skynet's developer page so you can check it out for yourself. Some of the aircraft in DCS have these big circles pop up on their multifunction display showing the location of air defenses and their threat rings. But is this realistic? The answer is not a short one, so let's dive in. Many modern tactical aircraft do have the ability to input the location of known air defense threats into their system just like it's shown. But that all depends on knowing those locations ahead of time. An ELIMP plane like the RC-135 might have discovered a SAM site and plotted its location. Or a strike jet on a previous mission could have reported a missile position to the unit's intel team. These are all ways to plot that information on a MFD display. However, there is a big problem with doing things this way. That information can be hours old by the time a pilot is flying a mission over those plotted SAM rings. Early on in the Cold War, the Soviets found out that static air defenses would be wiped out quickly. So they began designing mobile air defenses that could quickly pick up and move if discovered. A good example is the S-300 family of SAMs, which can go from traveling to a ready-to-fire state in just five minutes. So in a few hours, it could easily be dozens or even hundreds of miles away from its last firing position. Putting a threat ring on that old position would cause more problems than it solves. So if it's likely the SAM is mobile, it won't get a fixed plot programmed into the aircraft's computer. So how can we model this in DCS? It's pretty easy, actually. In the mission editor, every SAM unit gets this checkbox. If it's checked, then it would not show up on any MFDs in the game. So go ahead and check that box for mobile SAM systems. Leave it unchecked for static ones like the SA-5, which are usually built in custom facilities, like this one, and really time-consuming to move around. 
When I say regimen, I'm talking about how SAMs were organized under Soviet air defense doctrine. That doctrine is still followed today in a lot of places. Here's how that fits into the Army hierarchy structure. The regiment level is where the command center is, along with the radar used to find targets in a wide area. Sometimes units at this level are called a brigade. A brigade is an oversized regiment, but not quite big enough to move up to the next level and become a division. Here we have a regiment of SA-11s. This one has three batteries of launchers, but when it's a brigade, then that number moves up to four. Down below the regiment level, we have the individual SAM batteries. These have their own target acquisition radar, launch units, and a battery command post. It's also not uncommon for them to have short-range air defense in addition to the larger launchers. There will also be a number of support vehicles for maintenance, reloading, or to provide electrical power. When you place regiments or brigades in the mission editor, you'll want to place them strategically. Here we see a SAM brigade set out haphazardly with a lot of holes in its coverage. An enemy aircraft could easily sneak through the gaps. But if you place them like this, we not only fill those gaps, but each SAM battery is now also protected by its neighbors. And if one of the sites is knocked out, then it won't leave a big hole because we have overlapping coverage. No matter what you call them, organizing your SAMs this way will bring a little more realism to your air defenses. As we went over how to make SAM regiments, you probably noticed a lot of extra details around the SAM site that aren't part of the base game. These were all drawn from a player-made add-on called the SAM Sites Assets Pack. This pack not only includes a lot of the equipment you see around the site, but it also includes these revetments. Real-life air defenses are usually protected by revetments so that a single weapon can't take out an entire site. They also protect against near misses. And that's not all. It's not uncommon to see radars placed on top of structures like this to increase their range. The curvature of the Earth will block line of sight after a point known as the radar horizon. Raising up a radar's antenna will push that radar horizon farther out and let the system see farther. One thing to keep in mind with this pack is that unlike Skynet, players using a map with these assets will have to download and install the pack. You can check out the SAM assets pack for yourself at the link in the description. When we say SHORAD, we're talking about all the gun and missile systems that are made for short-range defense. This includes shoulder-fired missiles like this SA-14 and gun systems like the ZSU-23. Even though they're short-range, they can be very deadly because they give pilots very little time to react. And since a lot of these systems don't use radar, there's no warning that an aircraft has been shot at. During the Vietnam War, short-range gun systems accounted for more U.S. aircraft combat losses than SAMs and fighters combined. So they shouldn't be ignored just because they can't reach as far as a strategic SAM. They were effective for a couple reasons. One was that attack jets would come in at low altitude where radars had difficulty finding them. Placing gun systems along expected ingress routes became a very deadly strategy that cut a lot of strike planes while they were low. The other reason they were so successful was that pilots would often evade a missile by diving for the terrain. A smart air defense commander would place gun systems under the SAM umbrella to catch any intruders using this tactic to get away. You can do the same thing in DCS by placing guns and shoulder-fired missiles along the expected ingress routes of players. Place some more of them just inside the edge of a SAM's threat rings to ambush anyone diving to evade your missiles. Be devious, just like a real air defense commander, and see how it changes the DCS experience. Going with the default setup for air defenses really trivializes them in DCS. It makes the experience of fighting them more like a trip to a shooting range than an even fight. But we can change that. With these five tips, you'll make missions with a little extra realism and a lot more challenge. Let me know if you have any tips of your own, and thanks for watching.